Welcome back to my channel, Everyday Homeschooler, where we chat about education, homemaking, and everyday life. Today I thought I would take you along with me as I prepare and plan for our next homeschool unit, the Gather Round Human Body. So grab a cup of coffee and let's dive in. Okay, so obviously the first place that I start when I am planning a new unit is the Gather Round website. I decide which unit we are going to study next and I purchase it. Once I have it downloaded, I spend a good bit of time on my laptop just looking through the teacher's guide, looking through the student pages, and just getting a really good feel for the curriculum. This normally takes me a good hour or so, but I just want to take some time for me as mama to familiarize myself with what we're going to be learning for the next few weeks. Next, I begin printing. In our household, we use the teacher guide digitally, but I do go ahead and print out the table of contents and all of the beautiful planning pages that are included in the teacher guide. I like to have these on paper for myself to reference, and I just personally like to plan and prepare on paper rather than digitally on a screen. I also go ahead and print all of the student pages that my kids are going to be using. As I've mentioned in my previous Gather Round video, videos. My kids are kind of in between levels right now. I have a kindergartner who is making the jump from the pre-reader pages to the early reader pages. And then I also have some upper elementary middle school kids that are doing a combination of those pages. So I kind of make sure I look through and really get a feel for what student pages I want to print for each child for each lesson. I print double-sided on a little bit heavier weight of paper than just your run-of-the-mill copy paper. I think that this just makes it a little bit higher quality for my kids and you know you don't have anything bleeding through one page to the next. Now I've mentioned my ink tank printer before and I will just recommend our printer again. I love our brother printer and I will make sure to link it below. I also spend some time and go ahead and print anything that's in the teacher guides appendix and any extras that I've decided to purchase. For this unit for human body, I did go ahead and buy the coordinating body posters that were for sale as well as the cursive books. For this unit in the teacher guide, there are vocabulary words in the back. So I went ahead and printed those on heavyweight paper and cut those out and laminated them. The same thing with the body posters. I printed those on cardstock and I was laminating those. Now, if you are a homeschooler and you have not invested in a laminator, I cannot encourage you enough to just go ahead and make that purchase for your homeschool. In our house, I tend to be a little bit of a lamination junkie. I laminate a lot of things just out of desperation. My kids know if it is laminated, this is important. It's not something that should get crumbled up or thrown away and it needs to be um, kept track of. Once I have everything printed and organized, the next thing that I do is head right for my own supply shelves. One thing I would insert and encourage you is to try your best to to look through your own home and supplies before you hop on Amazon or do any kind of online purchasing. It's really easy to kind of get sucked in and see all of these wonderful resources out there and quickly fill your online cart with dozens of books and activities and things that you can do with your kids. You would be surprised the things that you already have on hand at home that won't cost you anything. Now for me, I'll be honest, I did do a little bit more online purchasing for this unit than I normally do, mostly just because of what's happening in our country right now. We are currently still um, staying at home a good bit. Many activities and field trips are not available. So I just wanted to make sure that I had a lot of fun and new items and activities that would engage my kids at home. 
in our basement, I have bins that are labeled for each subject where I store all of our overflow curriculum, education supplies, anything that is just school related that I have purchased along the road that I think we could use again someday. So I went ahead and went right down to our science bin. I actually was able to find a few items that I had forgot we had. I also went over to our board game shelves and searched through our puzzles and board games and activities just to see if we had anything on hand that would relate to the human body. The next thing I do is pull up the gather round book suggestion list that is in the teacher's guide. This is one of my favorite components of the gather round units and I find it very helpful. I go through all of the suggestions that are listed for each of the different age ranges. I try to make sure that I have one picture book for each lesson especially for my kindergartner to look through, as well as a couple of chapter books for my older kids to possibly use for their independent reading. Lastly, I always make sure I pick one read aloud that either I am personally as mama, I'm going to read aloud to them every single day, or maybe I'm going to use as an audio book to play for them during meal times. So normally picking out books and checking all of the supplies that we have on hand takes me about an hour or so to do. And again, as I accumulate things and find things around the house, I just, I keep piling them up on our school table. The next thing I do, and it's probably my favorite part of this entire process, is I sit down and I decide upon a few extra fun things that we're going to do inside of our homeschool. This is a time when I definitely look at other YouTube channels and Pinterest to gather ideas and get inspiration for fun things that we can do at home. We try to make Fridays a fun day every week and I try to plan some sort of special activity or outing or snack maybe a DVD or a documentary, just something fun and extra on top of our school day that we will do every Friday that pairs with what we're studying. For human body, right now off the top of my head, I'm thinking that maybe on the first Friday we will do some cell models. I thought maybe I would allow my middle school kids to use craft supplies, styrofoam spheres, felt, anything I have just in my craft supplies downstairs, and let them come up with their own cell models. I thought that maybe I would let my kindergartner get out some play-doh and clay that I already have on hand and create her own cell model. The next Friday I thought we would do a board game day. I went ahead and purchased a few board games and activities online just because right now field trips are not really an option in our area. Another Friday I thought that we could do somewhat of an art day. I was able to reserve a really great figure drawing book from our library and I thought it would be fun just to get out some of our special art supplies, paints, pastels, maybe our big drawing paper, and let the kids sit down and try their hand at drawing figures. One of the other activity days I thought we could have was a sensory station of sorts. As we are learning about the five senses, I thought that maybe I could set up our kitchen table with different sense stations. For example, I thought maybe I could soak some cotton balls in some different smells, maybe vinegar and perfume, like just different things that are um, really strong scents, and let the kids smell each one of them and see if they can differentiate each one. I thought that maybe I could blindfold them and let them taste some different foods and see if they can guess what they are. Um, another thought was to maybe use some brown paper lunch sacks and put different items in them and let them blindly put their hand in and feel and guess what item is in the bag to talk about touch. So I think you get my idea, just some type of sensory station at our kitchen table, very simple with items we already have on hand around the house. The last Friday, I was thinking about doing a field day in our backyard. The last couple of lessons in Gather Round are covering nutrition and exercise. So I thought it would be really fun to maybe just make a healthy snack and go out back and set up some track and field style obstacles or events for the kids to do right in our own backyard. This is a time in my planning when I also go ahead and do a quick search on our library or Netflix or YouTube and try to jot down some ideas for just some screen time options for my kids. Maybe 
maybe a magic school bus episode or a documentary for my older kids about the human body. Just some things that I can have in my back pocket if we have a free evening where I want to spend some screen time watching something about what we're learning in school. So we all hopped in the van. It's a beautiful day today and drove and got a nice little treat here and then stopped at our local library because thankfully it has opened back up for curbside pickup. You can call ahead, reserve your books and they will bring them out to your car just like if you did like a grocery pickup order. These first sets of books that I have are just some nonfiction books that I got from the library and a few that I had on hand. These are the respiratory system, digestive system, skeletal system. Um, I also found a book about how your body needs exercise. This is just a magic schoolhouse human body book. And then these are Usborne books. This is the See Inside Your Body flap book. This is really great. My kids, all of them, um, from my kindergartner all the way to my upper elementary, middle school kids, they love the idea of being able to flip the flaps open. Lastly, I have the Usborne Science Encyclopedia. I keep this out on our reference shelf all the time. We use it for almost every unit. It is just chuck full of so many good pages of information. The illustrations are really engaging, especially for middle school kids. So what I will do is I will go through and just mark these pages with post-it notes so that they are easy to reference as we go through each lesson and as the kids are doing their research topics, they can turn to these pages for more information. Here are some more just great nonfiction books. This one is just about the human body in general. This one is about eating the rainbow. Here is just my body. This one will be really great for Mariah. And then again, just some nice nonfiction picture books, the circulatory system, the muscular system, and the nervous system. I also always try to pick out some fiction books for my kids, especially my kindergartner and my toddler, just some fun couch time books to read through. This one is Whose Knees Are These? Nurse Nancy, a golden book. This is a big, thick book um, that contains six different Dr. Seuss beginner books. Um, it has the eye book, the knee book, the nose book, the tooth book, the ear book, and the foot book all in one. We also have Mr. Putter and Tabby Run the Race. Again, this would be about exercise. This was one of the ones on the Gather Round suggestion list, When God Made You. I just thought this one would also be fun, especially for my toddler, the Press Here book. This one I had on hand myself, Germs Make Me Sick. Uh, this was a Reading Rainbow book, but I just love this Let's Read and Find Out series. We have done lots of different science books from this series. I have another Magic School Bus Inside the Human Body. Here's Eric Carl from Head to Toe. Ezra will really enjoy when we read this one. And then these are actually some of my husband and I's books from when we were kids. Uh, Tiggy Goes to the Hospital, Adventure in the Dark. We can kind of talk about our eyes when we read this book. And then also Chippy Goes to the Dentist. So we can talk about, we can read this one the day we talk about teeth. I also went ahead and picked out um, two of these Who Was books. Who was Helen Keller and who was Clara Barton? I may read these out loud myself to the kids a couple chapters every day, or I may have Noah and Leah each read one of them on their own. I haven't quite decided yet. And then I had also reserved this book from our library, Five Minute Sketching People. I thought we could use this on our art special activity day on a fun Friday. Now, a lot of these books I have, we may not get to every one of these. I like having lots of options for the kids to thumb through or get to on their free time. Or, you know, I think there's a lot of wisdom and just having lots of books around can encourage a lot of learning. 
I also reserved these from our library. They are just DVDs. This one is The Magic School Bus Human Body. Here is The Cat and the Hat. Oh, the skin we are in. And then I, I'm not really sure what this one is about, but I thought we would give it a try. The Fabulous Five Hour Senses. Here is just a quick look at the activity and board games that I was able to find. I had this Melissa and Doug magnet set already on hand, and I thought this would be fun for Mariah to play with. I also found these really great tube little figures. There's, you know, a stomach and a heart, a brain, all these different body parts that are just kind of fun manipulatives that my kids might enjoy messing around with while I'm reading. So I'll just leave those out in a bowl on the table. Just a little bit of a warning about this Melissa and Doug set. Um, they are anatomically correct. There is a boy body and a girl body in their skin. So that may be some um, a couple of the magnets. If you're not ready to have that conversation with your children, you could take those parts out and just leave in the muscles and skin and nerves and things like that. This is just a body parts learning game. Our local library allows you to borrow different board games and sets. So this was a kit that they had. Um, we'll see how that goes. This is a look into your body all about you from the inside out. This is a book and a human skeleton puzzle that I had found at a secondhand store years and years ago. Um, so we'll also do some of these, look, these nice big flat pictures and we'll definitely be doing the skeleton puzzle. But I also went ahead and ordered the game Operation for my kids. They, um, We didn't own this board game. It's something I was surprised I actually didn't already have on my shelves. And I was able to get on sale on Amazon. So this will definitely be a fun thing to do on our board game day. The last thing that I do is I update our school space. At this point, our school table is overflowing with all of the items that I have collected for our unit. The first thing I do is fill our book ledges. A few years back, I purchased some picture ledges from Ikea that were pretty inexpensive and hung them on our wall in our school room. I use these to display any books that are gonna go along with the lessons we're going to be studying for the next week or so. This is a place where the kids know they're allowed to go and grab books off the wall, look through them whenever they would like. I also went ahead this time and created a little bit of a centerpiece in the middle of our school table we already have some succulents there, but I thought I would go ahead and take um, the Melissa and Doug magnets that we had and create just a little figure there. I also took those little tube organs and put them in a bowl just for something for Mariah or one of the kids to have to mess around with while they're listening to me read the teacher guide. I also hung all of the body posters that I printed and laminated on the wall. I just thought this would be a fun visual for the kids in the weeks to come. And I went ahead and updated a Bible verse that goes along with what we're studying on my letter board on my bookshelves. The last thing that I do is create a new image on our chalkboard. This is just something I enjoy doing. It's a creative outlet for me, and I like putting the title of what we're studying as well as a few just not very well drawn pictures along with it. I take the rest of the supplies and activities and books that we have and fill the shelf that is right inside of our schoolroom so that they are always an easy grab for me or the kids as we're studying in the weeks to come. All in all, planning and prepping in this way is a little bit of a time investment. It takes me a day or two to do all of this, but for me, it's well worth it. My goals behind doing this type of planning and preparation is to help make Gather Round as open and go as possible. I don't want to have to be scrambling the night before looking for books or activity pieces or supplemental things that I want to go along with our lesson for the next day. I want to have all of that already out right at my fingertips. I also as mama like to have a good idea of the scope and sequence of what we're going to be studying and what we're going to do. Um, just for me while, right now with having an infant and a toddler, I'm oftentimes having to juggle a lot. So taking a little bit of time on the front end to really feel confident in what we're studying helps me to get through our day to day. 
The biggest reason I do all of this planning and prep work and updating of our schoolroom is that I really want to inspire and encourage learning in our home for my kids and for myself. Having a nice visual space to look at, having new things out and things constantly changing in our schoolroom keeps things exciting, keeps them engaging. And I don't know about you, but it helps me as mama be excited to teach. This is always contagious with my kids. The more excited I am about a unit, it tends to be they follow. The more excited they are about the unit. Thank you so much for watching today. If you haven't done so already, check out the other videos that I have done about Gather Round. I'll make sure to link them below. Also, I will try to post another video once we finish the human body unit, uh, maybe a review and just an update about how things went, what things worked, what things didn't. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I make new videos each week about education, homemaking, and everyday life.